Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to 1Q FY24 earnings call of Action Construction Equipment hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jinesh Gandhi from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Zico. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Motila Loswal Financial Services, I would like to welcome you all to discuss 1Q FY24 earnings of Action Construction Equipment. ACE is represented by Mr. Saurabh Agarwal, Executive Director. Mr. Rajan Lutra, our Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Vyo Magarwal, Senior Vice President. I'll hand over the call to Mr. Saurabh Agarwal for his opening remarks, post which we'll start with Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Agarwal. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good evening and welcome everyone to this earnings conference call for discussing the results for the quarter ended June 23. Along with me in today's earnings call, we have our CFO, Mr. Rajan Lutra, and our Head of Investor Relations, Mr. Vayom Agarwal. The company's financial statements and earnings presentation summarizing the performance of Ford One FI24 have been circulated and uploaded on the stock exchanges. And I will take you through some of the key highlights of our performance in the quarter gone by. The company has maintained its growth momentum in the first quarter of the current fiscal year. This has been yet another quarter of strong and resilient performance by our company. And I'm delighted to share that the financial year has started strongly for us. We were able to record our best ever quarterly performance in terms of revenues and profits. And also for the first time ever, our quarter one results have surpassed the preceding quarter four numbers. To brief you on the financial performance of the first quarter, FY24, on a yearly standalone basis, that is year on year basis, the official revenues grew by more than 30% to 650 crores with an EBITDA margin of 15%. The EBITDA during the quarter increased by more than 113% to 97.5 crores as against rupees 45.72 crores. The PVT grew by 125% to 89.23 crores and PAD grew by 133% to rupees 67.26 crores as compared to last year's corresponding quarter. The PBT and PAT margins now stand at 13.72% and 10.34% respectively for the quarter on standalone basis. On a sequential basis, quarter on quarter, the revenues are up by 6%. This is one of our most robust performance given the anecdotal evidence of our sales trend in the first quarter. The EBITDA, EBT, and PAT have increased sequentially by 20%, 22.5%, and 29% respectively. Moving on to the segmental business performance, the company has sustained its growth momentum across all operating segments. In the crane segment during the quarter gone by, we reiterated our dominant market leadership position and registered revenue of 441 crores, which is up by 26% year-on-year. Year. In volume terms, the crane business has grown by 17% year-on-year to a 1856 crane in the last quarter. We are pleased to update that the growth momentum in the CE segment has sustained and we have again surpassed our projected growth targets. The segment has registered a volume growth of 80% year-on-year. Further, as compared to last year's corresponding quarter, the CE segment, construction equipment segment, clocked the revenue of revenue growth of 78% and we achieved revenue of 92 crores with margins in excess of 14%. This is a testimony to our clear and compelling strategy backed by the strength of our brand. The metal handling segment recorded revenue growth of 10% and stood at 41 crores with margins at 10.17% and our agri division registered revenue of 75 crores while recording margins at 6% thereby registering a growth of close to 30% year on year. Further, we were able to attain good traction in the overseas markets and increase our exports. We are on track to attain around 10% contribution to our revenue in the current year from export sales. On the operational side, 
India has remained stable in the continuing global macroeconomic volatility. The domestic activity in quarter one FI24 has remained resilient as reflected by various economic indicators. The healthy balance sheets of corporates, normalization of supply chain and stable commodity prices are favorable for continued growth in the sectors where we operate in. The manufacturing activity in the country has been on the upswing aided by positive geopolitical scenarios in favor of our nation and continued focus of our government to increase the manufacturing progress of our country. According to data released by SNC Global Market Intelligence, India's manufacturing activity as measured by Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, was at 57.7 in July as demand scenario improved and new orders increased. The enhancement in manufacturing capabilities and capacities of our country will further aid in the growth story of our company as manufacturing segment is one of the prime consumers of our cranes and material handling segment equipment. The infrastructure growth story continues to play a significant role in the economic growth and will have its multiplier effect on the economy. We believe that going forward, the strong demand scenario for our products should sustain itself supported by government's unwavering focus on urban infra and rural development. And the front loading of capital expenditure announced in the Union Budget 2023 will further aid in the current year. We continue to be a debt free company with sufficient availability of liquidity for future growth. The envisaged brownfield capex of 90 to 100 crores for the current year is already under implementation and we expect to make the expanded as well as the new facilities operational by quarter three, quarter four of the current financial year. This capex will expand our capacities and will enable us to attain revenue in the range of rupees 4,000 crores at full utilization levels. Looking ahead, India is one of the fastest growing economy and its prospects remain very strong for the period ahead. With continued focus of government on infrastructure development and efforts to strengthen the manufacturing sectors, we hereby upgrade our earlier guidance and expect a growth of at least 20 to 25% on consolidated basis. In the trains and agri segment for the current year, we foresee a growth of 18 to 20% at least. Further, we expect the construction equipment segment to grow by at least 45 to 50% and metal handling to grow by 15 to 20%. We hope that we are in a position to revise these projections by the third quarter, which will predominantly depend on the overall macroeconomic scenario, especially the monsoons and uh, the commodity prices. Further, we remain optimistic about the medium to long term prospects of our company and remain focused to deliver on our growth agenda. We will continue to drive cost saving harder and take calibrated pricing actions whilst ensuring we protect and grow our markets. We believe that our building blocks are firmly in place and are on path of sustainable growth in all our segments where we operate, leading to expansion in top line, bottom line, and margin profile of the company. With this, I would uh, request the moderator to open the call for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of C.A. Garvid Goyal from Invest Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, good evening. Yes, you are audible. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is uh, basically on the demand uh, outlook on the end industry. So basically, you uh, in the, your opening remarks, you mentioned about the near-term outlook. So how do you see at... Uh, at the medium term and long term perspective, like you mentioned in Q2, uh, Q3 and Q4, you are going to do a capex that will uh, that will give you a revenue potential of I think INR 4000 as you mentioned. So, how do you look at uh, next three to four years uh, down the line, sir? If I talk of the demand scenario, we currently our major 
end segments are infrastructure and manufacturing. And luckily, uh, you know, the situation our country is all that as of now. The government is very much focused on manufacturing, which is very evident. And with all the PLI and China plus one plus XYZ. And uh, apart from that, uh, we are also getting a lot of, you know, to be very frank, outsourcing opportunities in the export market to, to manufacture for, for some other uh, countries and uh, players. So a, a lot of things are happening. The domestic demand uh, and, and a lot of our trains and metal handling, everything goes to the manufacturing as well as infrastructure side. The so manufacturing is booming. The export potential we are capitalizing on and the opportunities are only increasing. And uh, infrastructure, everybody is aware what is happening because now what is happening, infrastructure is again uh, leading to more steel, more cement, leading to more of everything. So it's, it's a continuous cycle. So things seem to be on a roll as of now. And it's been some time that uh, we have, uh, on a monthly basis, not been able to fulfill uh, the amount of clearances or dispatches which were required across cranes and even construction equipment. And we've been under tremendous pressure, and that's why we are expanding the brownfield expansion that we are doing. So hopefully a very small part of it should start functioning uh, in September, most of it coming in October, November. And finally, by, by, by Jan said, uh, most this should be functional properly. So this will definitely help us, you know, increasing our revenue going forward in uh, quarter three, and uh, especially in quarter four. Uh, both of them, but I would feel uh, more in quarter four. And, uh, you know, the way things are poised that, you know, uh, and the feeling and the sense that I get, and uh, even from uh, real estate sector, which is 10% contributor within our train segment, which is about 60, 78%, it is, we require to make double the number of trains what, what we have been doing. And, and we've already started reaching that level. So things are looking good, things are looking great. Uh, you know, if, if I talk of it, only one uh, bullet train uh, construction project had started and the second phase has just been awarded very recently. And uh, very actively another 6-7 DPRs are already on the way. Uh, this is uh, just one bullet train. So I think uh, a lot is happening. The government is really focused on <coughs> developing the country, developing the infrastructure. And, uh, in, uh, and I can uh, say that in some sort even uh, the capex cycle with respect to small and even the small and medium industries started happening. So when I look around, even our vendors and a lot of our customers, so most of them uh, seem to be on the expansion drive. So, so they again require more cranes and more metal handling, even when they are trying to expand or do the capex. And finally, to run that capacity, they again need more machines. So the scenario uh, seems to be very buoyant. And, and to be very frank with you, uh, you know, uh, the market, uh, like I said, in quarter one, going from quarter four, it always squeezes a little 15, 20, 25 percent. But we saw the contrary. Rather, we were able to increase our revenue by 6 percent in quarter one against quarter four. And uh, again, in quarter two, where we, which we are currently running into, the monsoons uh, tend to slow down, uh, you know, the demand. But, uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen with the company for, since 1998, the company started in 1995, and from day one I was also involved in sales. So I have never seen uh, this type of momentum in monsoon. I mean, uh, we were thinking that, uh, you know, we will load up, make some extra machines so that we are able to cater properly in quarter three, quarter four, but uh, even uh, the month of June, the month of July, we have been uh, loaded. Uh, you know, uh, we couldn't uh, save anything. Rather, uh, we under-delivered with respect to what we could have delivered. So the momentum is very strong. Now, you, your main question, the last three, four years, I think the type of scenario which has been created in our uh, country and, and, and the potential also, not only for us, even for the whole country with respect to manufacturing, with respect to exports and uh, looking at alternative solutions, the world is looking for, uh, you know, uh, against China. I think... Uh, we are greatly poised. The entire country is greatly poised to grow. So, and I hope uh, things remain like this. Understood, sir. That that's really helpful. 
And secondly, sir, uh, you mentioned about the export, right? Uh, you are saying uh, you will reach out to 10% of the over, uh, overall revenue. So, what are those countries basically we are exporting to? Like uh, in Europe, there is, there are some headwinds going on. So, might be there uh, there may be lower demand. So, might be there, uh, that is not an area that we are targeting. So, what are those countries that we are looking for? See, uh, practically there are no headwinds for us because three four years back you were hardly exporting anything. And this we have evolved in the last three, four years and uh, still continuing to grow on it. And our medium term target, I would say, is 10 to 15 percent of revenue contribution. And uh, we would be, I think, uh, competitively, we should be at 9, 10 percent, uh, if not more, within this year. And uh, we are, uh, you know, we are focused on some Middle Eastern countries, some African countries, recently Turkey, Mexico. Uh, Argentina and uh, Brazil in uh, the South American continent. Also, some uh, you know XCIS countries, even Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and even Russia. So, uh, and, uh, we are exposed to about 37 countries now. So, I have just given you some names. I mean, there are uh, many more names uh, which are smaller buyers. So, and and this is see, these things that started happening in the last two three years. So, we are building upon it, building upon the products, building upon the service, building upon our brand in those countries, and uh, uh, this will all uh, further grow from, from where we are. Uh, not only our footprint in other countries where we think there is potential, but even in the, within these countries. Because uh, entering a market and, and, and uh, establishing your product and your service and then growing, it, it, it takes time. It takes one year, two years, three years, and, and it continues to grow. So I think uh, in certain countries we have started to grow. And, and then things are looking good. And uh, like I mentioned, we are also getting a lot of outsourcing opportunities from uh, from the developed uh, world. So and uh, so, you know, if something like that, uh, which we are sure will materialize over the next two three quarters, uh, that can again add in a very uh, reasonable way to our uh, top line with respect to exports. So that potential also very much exists, and we are actively working on it. Apart from uh, you know what we are actually manufacturing in India, we are also for the first time uh, making products, a couple of new products. I mean, we already make similar products, but we are upgrading them with technology and uh, uh, the, even the styling and fit to finish, which uh, uh, you know other countries where there is demand like it to wear. So and and that activity should also happen by December January. So I think. Uh, some part of it in Q4, but starting from next year onwards, these uh, new uh, backhoe loaders and new tele handlers, which are very much suitable for every part of the world, developed or undeveloped, because that is what we are used to using. And with their standards uh, with respect to performance as well as the look, feel, styling part of it. So I think uh, uh, next year should be even uh, better for us. And uh, also our that Ghana initiative with respect to export. Uh, unfortunately, it's got delayed by about two quarters. So let's see uh, the final confirmation we've got that something should start to happen in quarter three. So we were expecting uh, that that will contribute in the current year uh, to some extent with respect to our export initiatives, but, but that has got delayed. And uh, so maybe some part of it might come in the second half of this year, And uh, but the major chance will start to happen from FY25 onwards. That will again add to our initiative, and then all of this might lead us to 15 percent uh, export contribution, which, which we said this year, I'm sure uh, we go to 10 percent. Understood, sir. And sir, lastly, on the margin side, so we are uh, doing a decent EBITDA right now. So, yes. how do you see how, uh, like, uh, how sustainable these margins are for next two three years? Like you are mentioning, uh, 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 with more than 20% uh, growth for this year and next year also even better. So, uh, considering that, how sustainable these margins are, and secondly, what is your view on the competitive landscape uh, for you in this industry? See, uh, with respect to margins, I think for the last two three quarters, I've been uh, mentioning that. Double digit is here to stay for us, and now that uh, we have reached uh, close to 14 and a half, 15 percent, uh, I feel they are very much sustainable. And all our efforts, including the operating leverage which we are getting, coupled with our cost reduction initiatives and cost control initiatives, and also our product mix, which we are which we are trying to move towards, you know, a b better uh, margin products. I think all of this coupled together, uh, these margins are here to stay. 
and uh, I feel that uh, there is still scope to uh, improve these margins. Uh, but uh, it will be better if we improve them and inform you rather than saying that yes, we are working on improving them further. Understood, sir. Understood. And you uh, asked about competitive, competitive landscape. So obviously, uh, market is very competitive. It is survival of the fittest. And our simple strategy is right product, right price, right service. And we are very much focused there with respect to whatever we do. And we have been doing it well for the last 25, 26 years. And uh, now with operating leverage and our revenues going to a certain level, I think uh, you know, uh, market sales side, but a simple asool. Jitna dikta, utna dikta. So I'm sure hum hum sab jagah dikte hain. So hum aur jada hi dikhenge. And we leave no stone unturned to make sure ki jisne nahi dekha usko bhi dikha de. So I, I think we are on the right track. That's really that's really good, sir. And all the best for the future, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aman Shah from Jite Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers, sir. Uh, my first question is, sir, um, on backhoe loaders, now we are seeing a good traction uh, from last two, three quarters. Uh, of course, our guidance is also quite good. What is your outlook now? What are we seeing, like, uh, the way the volume growth that is happening, uh, as you said, jitna bitta hai, jitna bitta hai. So that scale benefit is now clearly visible to us uh, in back to this. See, obviously our numbers are small. It is a market of 35,000 uh, to 40,000 units. And uh, this year, if everything goes well, we will be in there about, of about 1,000 units. Uh, maybe a little less, but in all probability, more than that. And uh, we would uh, easily be growing at least 45-50%, uh, if not more. So, you know, this is again a thing that jitna uh, jitna dikta hai, usta dikta hai. So, thoda dikna shuru ho gaya, thoda dikna shuru ho gaya. And uh, people are working hard, our teams are working hard. We are adding on teams, we are adding on new locations, even within the country. We are also focused on export. So, I believe that this is one of our segments, uh, which can actually be the fastest growing segment for us for the next 5-7 years at least. And uh, we can look at very handsome growth here uh, in this segment uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. And uh, so, uh, as an example, uh, you know, even in the uh, current quarter which we have finished, the last quarter, I think on a segment basis, uh, we've been able to clock a 78% growth. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, this, this is one of, uh, let's say, a really good quarter, but on a whole, I would say 45-50% or more than that is, is doable, and you're working in the right direction. And I'm sure two, three years down the line, it will come to a stage that we will not have to sell it. You will not have to sell the product. The product will sell on its own. So that is the foundation we've been able to lay in the last two, three years. And I'm sure uh, with our continued effort, uh, you know, we'll further uh, increase our market share from one, one and a half percent, we've gone to nearly three percent. And uh, going forward, I think doing a eight, ten percent in the next three, four, five years should not be difficult. That means 5,000 units or 4,000 units annually multiplied into the selling size and costing of 1,000, 1,500 crores worth of taxes in the next three, four years. I think should be easily doable. If we are able to perform better, uh, it can even be faster than this. And uh, just, just adding here, uh, we are also working on upgrading uh, this product to international levels with respect to styling and look, feel, fit, feel, finish. And hopefully that, uh, that project of ours should be over by December, January. So Q4 onwards, the product uh, which we'll be, we'll be offering in the market would, would, would feel like a, as good as a European product, even for Indian market and even for our export. So, so hopefully we'll see even better days uh, in the next financial year. Okay, okay, great, sir. Uh, on exports, um, currently, uh, just want to know, like, the main product that you'll be exporting would be grains. Uh, that would be one question. Second is... We also said in exports we are doing some outsourcing opportunity. So uh, is it like uh, we are uh, we are in and then the branding will be done by someone else? Uh, uh, yeah. Both your questions. First one first. Uh, we are uh, currently with respect to exports focused on uh, three things. Uh, one is grain, uh, second is alcohol, and third is fractions. And uh, we are seeing traction all across. 
and uh, recently we've opened up Turkey also, so we have sent some backloaders and uh, let's say another 300 odd tractors are safely to go within uh, by December. That is the plan of the buyer and our plan. And there's here again slightly special bigger tractors, not the standard ones which are sold in India, they higher horsepower tractors with cabins and four wheel drives. So, like I said, trains, backhoes, and uh, our uh, tractors, especially the higher range. And uh, with respect to outsourcing, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, all of you are aware that, uh, you know, China has been playing a big role in the outsourcing part of the world for even finished machines. So we have, uh, you know, a reasonable amount of opportunities available at, on this front. And uh, unfortunately, we were really not taking them forward because we were limited in our capacity to feed our domestic with respect to what we produce, which is our mainstay business. Now with enhanced capacities, I think over the next two, three quarters, we'll accelerate this effort. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll start, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, some uh, some decent products. Uh, and uh, one or two of them are really big global opportunities, which could also be in a joint name. Uh, so that all uh, commercial uh, things are uh, going on. And uh, hopefully, over the next two, three quarters, uh, we should be able to, you know, inform uh, everybody once once things go out well. Because the, the scale and size of the, the opportunities is huge, what I'm talking about. And even uh, the, the, the margin profile is, is even better than what we are doing currently. Right. So right now what exports we are doing is not having any outsourcing element in it, right? No. Right now uh, we are practically uh, no. Uh, right now no. Uh, right now it is direct selling in our own name to our dealers and distributors. It is an export of our own products, but now we are talking of making things jointly uh, or, uh, you know, making things for somebody else. Uh, but that is with respect to the main product. But, but these uh, companies also produce in their own countries. So to be very frank with you, they are also looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are also looking at us to supply them uh, some uh, high-end components and some other things so that they can also save some cost in their respective countries. So it is a mix of uh, complete machines and, and even at, uh, you know, uh, some bigger component tests. Mm. And I'm talking of uh, the developed world. So they're, they're, they're all in three continents, so I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, sir. Sir, on, on, uh, can you give the number of the uh, multi-activity cranes and big tonnage cranes in our crane segment for this quarter? Uh, can you just repeat your question, please? Multi-activity cranes, the new product line that we had, and the big tonnage cranes. Uh, These multi-activity, I don't have a ready number in front of me, but I know for sure that we've been averaging around uh, 20 uh, cranes, so every month. So, uh, so that would be about 60, 70 cranes in the last quarter. That is a multi-activity cranes. So which would actually mm -hmm. come to maybe three, four percent approximately. And uh, for uh, the bigger cranes, uh, let me just calculate for you. Uh, and I'm, I'm excluding tower cranes here because those are uh, different. So mm -hmm. And I think about uh, 22 uh, um, uh, let's say the uh, heavy slew cranes, uh, about 22 units of slew cranes we have done in the last quarter approximately. And uh, we have done uh, about, uh, if I talk of tower cranes, uh, we have done 148 tower cranes and another about 27 mobile tower cranes. So, so we put together close to about 175. 175 tower cranes and, uh, like I mentioned, 22 uh, heavy slew cranes. Okay, okay. So roughly 4 5 percent is still this multi-activity and big tonnage that is coming from both of them. Yeah, so, um, you know, out of about 1,500 pick and carry, if I talk of 60, 70, so close to about 3 to 4 percent is multi-activity, but yes, I think I did mention in my last call, uh, I think over the next one or two years, this will go to 10, 20 percent at least of the pick and carry sales. 
and and at that level they should also yield better margins than current uh, company margins see margin two things are happening obviously multi activity trains they will uh, be margin aggressive but within our pick and carry segment our port segment uh, there is upgradation happening so the 15 ton uh, guys customers are are buying uh, 20 tonner then the 20 tonner guys are buying 25 tonner then the 25 tonner guys are buying 30 tonner and there is also a reason that we think we introduce a 35 tonner and uh, going forward over the next uh, let's say six months to eight months we'll also have another bigger model so uh, you know uh, even the margin profile and and let's say the revenue profile is changing within pick and carry trade so uh, you know uh, 12 ton uh, four years back was the maximum selling category now it is the 14 15 tons which is moving towards 17 20 tons and uh, you, you see everything is uh, growing bigger in size so so mm-hmm. the pricing and and the revenue and and the margin uh, everything is going to uh, 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 is moving in the right direction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay great thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Suraj Navander from Sampada Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, what is our capex numbers? That uh, what is the amount of capex that we are doing? Uh, you are well, not audible, unfortunately. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, slightly better. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the amount of K- uh, capex that we are doing a uh, uh, brownfield capex? See, uh, as of now, uh, we are uh, close, it's close about 90 crores, and we slightly more can go up to 100 crores. Wherein uh, we are expanding our uh, fabrication uh, facilities. We are uh, because uh, you know we uh, we have had enough land available with us over the last eight ten years. So we are expanding our fabrication capacities. We are expanding our assembly lines. We are uh, setting up uh, some new assembly lines, and we are setting up a, a, a standalone facility for uh, the bigger flue cranes because uh, we intend to do at least 20, 30 every month. So in the last quarter we did 22, but our intention is to take it to 60, 70, 80 units in a quarter. And and the market up there again is growing, and the market has developed and evolved. so and uh, in the process what is also going to happen is that uh, you know certain things are moving to new lines so they will vacate space for certain other things to grow so on the whole uh, somewhere we are increasing our capacity by 70 80% somewhere around 40 50% and uh, most of this should be in place by december uh, with respect to backhaul orders uh, mm-hmm. i think that should also happen by q4 or Are the land available? Please go ahead with your question, Mr. Suraj. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any further land available after this capex? Because the kind of the commentary that you are giving, it seems like even next year we'll have to do some capacity expansion. We uh, we will have some more land available, but uh, I would say that we would have used uh, a reasonable portion of it. and uh, we are already in discussion with two state government to take a 50 60 acre chunk at 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 whatever best price you know just to ensure uh, that after two years when we need more land so what to do right we are already under discussion we are already in advanced stage so uh, in all probability over the next two three months either uh, we will move close to our setup uh, but in the state of up or uh, maybe madhya pradesh Okay, and sir, uh, can you give me debt and cash number in our books as the end of Q1? I think we hardly have any debt. About 35, 40 crores of working capital, if at all, we are using. And uh, our uh, cash investments are. Look at that. What is the figure? Four fifty-five crores. Four fifty-five crores of cash. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Gaurav Gandhi from Glory Tail Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? 
Yes, you are audible. Uh, yes, congratulations on the excellent set of numbers. Uh, just one observation: uh, agriculture division uh, recorded revenue of uh, 75 crores, which is a growth of almost you know uh, 29% YOY. Even though the sale of agri equipment significantly came down from 976 units to 761 units, can you explain what has happened here? We basically uh, we supplied uh, certain uh, bigger horsepower uh, tractors, so the product mix change happened first thing, and uh, also uh, some export uh, order got executed along with some army orders, which were again higher horsepower and four by four. So basically, because of the price. The product mix, uh, the overall revenue seems to be good. But uh, in saying this, I think uh, this is going to be maintained now. So now you will see the numbers also up and the price also up going forward. Great, that's it. Thank you. Great. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I just like to add here, uh, Vyom uh, and Lusa Saab, if you can take the next one or two questions, uh, and I'll join back in about two minutes. Sure, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Chinmay from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. I just uh, wanted to know, uh, into, uh, like if you could just uh, give an understanding of the couple of months of Q2 which have gone by. Uh, have we been functioning at 100% uh, capacity utilization? Because um, uh, sir was previously mentioning that uh, we weren't able to like. Uh, find enough time uh, to focus on the capex and were uh, really uh, busy with the uh, uh, completing the order. So just wanted to know the capacity utilization. Yeah, hi Chinmay. So for the crane segment, we have been working at around 85 to 90 percent of the capacity because practically uh, there are certain inefficiencies in the system, and our capacity generally gets defined by the fabrication uh, capabilities that we have. So, because we are working at higher utilization levels, uh, you know, we are we are looking to expand uh, in the in that area. With respect to the backhoe loaders and the construction equipment, we are working at around close to 55% of our capacity. And Agri is currently working at 40 to 45%, and material handling is also close to 70 to 75% of the capacity utilization. So, post uh, this expansion, which will happen in the crane segment. Specifically for the uh, you know the higher uh, tonnage cranes like taller cranes and heavy slew cranes, uh, which which will move to a new plant, uh, we will see a capacity expansion also happening for uh, tower cranes as well as uh, forklifts. Uh, all right, uh, thank you. And uh, the other thing I wanted to know in terms of um, like again uh, like the previous. Uh, Fellow person had asked a question regarding the. If, if you could hear a little bit louder, please. Uh, yeah, sorry, am I audible? Yeah, you are, but if a little bit louder, can be you might be yeah. better. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, much better. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to know that. Uh, I mean, in, in the agriculture division that we have grown by 29% um, via via revenue. Uh, how? I mean, uh, if you could maybe just give a much more detailed understanding of how is this going to be sustainable going ahead? Because a lot of the previous quarters have, uh, we have seen a really uh, slow growth in terms of revenue in the agriculture division. So if you could maybe give a picture on that. Yeah, so Chinmay, uh, we totally accept what you are saying that, you know, we have been slightly lethargic in our agri growth. But uh, over the last two, three years, our fundamentals have been put in place. And, uh, you know, our focus is basically on three things, which is number one, strengthening our distribution channel domestically. So, which we feel that uh, now we are uh, in, a, in a position to project around 10 to 15 percent uh, growth annually, which will come from our strengthened uh, distribution channel. This will help us to get some increased coverage for our agri product line. Second uh, focus is on deepening our project, uh, product range. So, uh, in the agri, we are coming out with the ultra light combined. And uh, we have also, you know, developed certain export-focused uh, range of tractors, which are especially in the 50 to 100 uh, HP uh, range. That is where we are seeing some uh, good numbers coming uh, coming through. And, uh, you know, most importantly, we are focusing on export market, which in the earlier in the call we have already explained. 
So all in all, we firmly believe that our fundamentals are strongly in place for future growth. And what you have just seen in the first quarter is, uh, we believe, quite sustainable going forward this year. Uh, Vyub, just to add to what uh, you said and just to specify a little more, we, uh, I will not take the name of the country, but uh, you got some confirmed orders uh, to be executed within this year from uh, a reasonably good amount of orders, that is for export. And it is slightly unfortunate that uh, the Ghana opportunity did not play out in this year uh, so far. So uh, if that would have happened, then uh, you know uh, the, 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 the numbers and the profile of the agri uh, would, would have started to look very different. And I'm sure if not this year, starts in quarter three, quarter four, will definitely happen in the next year. So that will also be one of the mainstays, apart from our domestic increasing, further exports increasing and exports in Ghana increasing. Uh, yeah, understood. Uh, thank you. Uh, the other question which I had was, what are the, uh, in terms of units, uh, if you can maybe give a uh, perspective on uh, the unit uh, expansion that will be happening. I mean, uh, rupees 4,000 is the expansion in terms of the revenue. Uh, in, uh, I mean, what will be the expansion in terms of units, if you can maybe give an... Uh, Trains have capacity to produce about 1,000 units in a uh, month. Mm -hmm. So that will be about uh, 12,000 units annually. Uh, construction equipment, which is currently at about 150 units, we will have capacity to produce about 250 units per month, which is about 3,000 in a year. Uh, in uh, metal handling, uh, from 175 uh, forklifts, we will have capacity to produce about 250 units per uh, month, which is again about 3,000 in a year. And uh, on the agri side, we are already, we are even as of today about 40, 45% utilized. So I think we have enough uh, space and scope to, you know, continue with, uh, so there is no uh, practically change happening with respect to agri. And in saying this, uh, our tower cranes, where uh, we could produce about 350, 400 units, so we will have a capacity which will go up to eight 900 units annually. And uh, crawler crane, truck crane, where we had a capacity to do about 50 units, that will go to 250 to 300 units annually. Uh, understood. I uh, just wanted one more clarification. Uh, the market expansion that we stated uh, that we are currently at 3% of the uh, market is uh, held by us, is that in the domestic? Can you hear me louder, please, so that your question is very clear? Uh, I'm sorry, just, just give me a moment. Uh, Hello. This is with my. Hello. I think we can go to the next question and maybe he can come back again. Okay, sir. Okay. Our next question is from the line of Naman Shah from Monarch Network Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, my first question would be, can you give us some update on the utilization of cash? I read we were looking for some inorganic growth. My question is like, what kind of acquisition are we open to? Is it specific to India or even global? Uh, to be very frank with you, uh, I'll start with our, what we had planned. We've already taken over two much, much smaller companies in the last one, one and a half years. One and a half years, I would say. That is finished. And uh, we were looking at two. Uh, one was backward, one was forward. Uh, unfortunately, both of them seem to have settled out. The forward one is still there, but uh, it's really not moving anywhere. And uh, apart from that, we are looking at some opportunities within the country and uh, also, uh, you know, uh, one opportunity outside the country. And, and uh, that is why we are creating this uh, war chest, uh, uh, you know, of liquidities uh, to enable us uh, in our or organic endeavors as well as in organic endeavors. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We move to the next question. Our next question is from the line of 
Surit Deorai from Paladin Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. I have two questions. One is actually a follow-up to the previous participant's question. Uh, you said you are looking at an M&A opportunity outside of India. Could you explain what the purpose of that would be? Um, I would love to, but I would uh, refrain, uh, you know, with respect to uh, our, our, our proposed business strategy. But it would be uh, more to uh, utilize a developed country name to sell in the developed country. Okay. Uh, and you I, understood, I think. Yeah, and actually my second question was something that you mentioned earlier uh, about uh, sourcing opportunity and JVs, and you said it could be a very big opportunity. Okay. Uh, I was not entirely clear on that, so actually both the questions are very closely tied, so if you can give me some more color on that, that would be very helpful. Yes. Uh, people, like I did mention that there are uh, opportunities from the European continent, American, and even you know, well, let's say the developed Asian side to uh, to tie up together and uh, produce uh, for uh, for for those countries, and uh, we are working on them, as, and uh, we are in advanced stages, and uh, I think uh, some of them should go through in the next two three quarters. So that will uh, also help us utilize our capacities if we are creating faster and uh, open up, uh, you know, uh, uh, the export market in a much bigger way, much organized way, with consistent uh, schedules, projections, and numbers. And uh, it, is, uh, it, it is happening. Uh, I think I, I should not be speaking more than that at this time. That's very helpful, sir. Thank you. You answered my question. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Chinmay from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Sorry, I had uh, disconnected. Uh, I also just wanted, uh, if you could just please uh, uh, give me the guidance for FY24 once again uh, on the uh, segmental level and maybe on an overall uh, company level. Yeah, so as of now, company level, uh, we are looking at a 20 to 25 percent growth. Um, uh, with maybe some more upside, uh, but that we can only confirm by quarter three. And uh, uh, on on the segment level, trains and agri, we are looking at at least 18, 20 percent. And I'm adding the word at least. Uh, metal handling, 15 to 20 percent, and uh, construction equipment, 45 to 50 percent. And again, I'm adding the word at least. Uh, understood, sir. And uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of margins, we will be able to maintain the double-digit margins going ahead, right? Yes, yes, sir. What we have uh, delivered uh, in this quarter, I think uh, that is sustainable. You know, 20, 30, 40 basis points here and there, so I really can't guarantee, but that is yeah, sustainable. Yeah. And with our, uh, you know, other uh, endeavors which are in place with respect to our costs, uh, we have also created a separate team uh, headed by one of uh, you know, veterans in the industry to further work on our costings and our uh, purchase and cost control uh, where we expect that over the next two, three quarters uh, we should uh, get another one to two percent advantage on our buy. So uh, similar other endeavors are also already in place. So uh, uh, there, there is further scope to further uh, better uh, what, we, what we are doing. Uh, just had one last question. Uh, the current market share that we have is three percent, and uh, with the potential increase that we'll have in the uh, with the expansion coming in, uh, let's assume if we ramp it up to hundred um, percent, then what could be the incremental market share that we could uh, probably acquire with the uh, with the unit that we are going to set up? In construction equipment, uh, will go to uh, three thousand units annually, so uh, that can uh, take us to eight nine percent market. Uh, okay, eight to nine percent market share. Uh, this capacity increase, which I'm talking about, is keeping uh, single shift operation in mind. Yeah. So with a little tweaking, uh, we can easily take it up to maybe even three fifty four hundred, which will uh, translate into uh, even twelve to thirteen percent market share possibility with with the facilities that will become functional by end of this year for construction. Thank you. Those are my questions. Yeah. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. In order to ask a question, please to press star and one. Our next question is from the line of Naman Shah from Monarch Network Capital Limited. Please go ahead. I uh our other income is slightly higher this time. Could you give give me some breakup of the other income that you want that it can face? Yes, I think Mr. Lutra is the right man, but I'll try and answer. See what happened in the last year uh, we uh, were reporting some mark to market uh, losses. So which uh, got uh, you know translated into some mark to market benefits in this quarter. And uh, coupled with that, our investments over the last one year also increased. So that also provided, uh, you know, some extra other income. So it is primarily to do with that. Uh, right, Professor? That's right, sir. You know, because even we were looking at it. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sarika, who is an investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, uh, it's hard to understand uh, the replacement cycle for the forklifts. Uh, could you help me? Receivable only with respect to forklifts? Yep. I think uh, we should be somewhere at about 25-26 days. At the industry level. At the industry level. The receivable. Yeah. Replacement cycle. I, I think uh, the question is with respect to the replacement cycle of forklift. I heard receivable. <laughs> the replacement cycle, I think the idea of forklift uh, would last uh, if used uh, for uh, more than 12 hours a day. Uh, I think it will conk off in about 6-7 years. And uh, if we, uh, maintained very well and uh, run less than 12 hours a day, maybe about eight years. So uh, I, I think uh, eight years would, I would say, would be an average uh, placement life for a focus. Okay, okay. So uh, probably if you can uh, help me understand the breakup between the ESG replacement, replacement and the fresh demand for this quarter. Uh, I don't think we have analyzed ESG replacements with respect to this, but I know for sure that, uh, you know, with our electric train, which uh, we had uh, not uh, commercialized only because of, uh, you know, the current uh, load on the plant with respect to regular production. So we are seeing good traction, even uh, some of the LNG divisions, uh, you know, with respect to their own ESG, they want to move on to electric trains, uh, including uh, Reliance and even Tata. So, but, but uh, I think uh, we will start to evaluate that once, uh, you know, once we are into that. Uh, but yes, for sure, in the last one or two years, we have seen more traction in numbers towards electric forklifts that we do. So, in our uh, kitty of forklifts that we do, that has uh, risen to 20-25% in our numbers. And going forward, I think it will go up to 50%. Uh, electric forklifts in our portfolio of, uh, let's say, the numbers that we do for forklifts. Also for the reason that uh, next year uh, the industry will be moving to BS5 standards. And uh, the smaller engine forklifts, the most popular three and uh, the cost increase is going to make it similar price to an electric forklift. And uh, the option of using electric will eventually become cheaper for the customer because, uh, you know, electricity is cheaper than uh, fuel. So uh, I think uh, going forward, and the, I would say after one year, uh, the, the demand for electric forklifts is further going to increase, and accordingly, we are further strengthening our portfolio of electric forklifts as well as uh, you know lithium-ion uh, based uh, forklifts. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yes, thank you. I think we have discussed most of everything. Uh, the country seems to be in a buoyant uh, scenario. The entire world focus is on India. Manufacturing is growing. Infra is growing. 
and uh, even for manufacturing and infra, we are indirect uh, beneficiaries uh, with respect to our end customers, mostly being placed in these two segments. And uh, we are uh, looking forward to at least a 20-25% growth in this year with sustained EBITDA margins at put in the half to 15% with uh, definitely a scope to, you know, a possibility of uh, upsiding or upscaling from here. And uh, in the last uh, about, about let's say, in FI21, uh, we had planned and thought that we will uh, double up our revenue and take it to 2,500 crores. And I think we are very much on track, and uh, we should be able to exceed that by at least 5, 10, 15 percent. That time will tell. And again, uh, we have a sense and a feeling that uh, from FY24 and going to FY27, we should be in a position to double up our uh, revenue again and uh, even a better uh, margin profile in place. And, uh, you know, in this year, in the second half, we are looking at uh, the new product introduction and commercialization, our electric train, our aerial work platforms, and uh, even our 35 tonner pick and carry train 4x4. And also looking at uh, materializing some, uh, like I mentioned, export outsourcing opportunity. So all in all, I think uh, this year uh, can uh, end up to be one of our uh, best, biggest, and brightest years. And, and lay the foundation for our doubling up process over the next uh, three years again. And good evening, and uh, thank you. That's thank all from you. my side. Yeah. Thank you. On behalf of Moti Oswal Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.